three other things I wanted to do tonight, which I didn't have time to do. If during this last session, if there's any little particular things you wanted to know about the stuff that we teach or anything, whether it be to do with the slow form or the you know martial side defense against something, whatever, just feel free to ask and we'll show. Um, okay, one last thing about knives. As I said before, you've got a rubber one, good. It's got a bad thumb, I don't want to use the steel. Okay. Anything to do, like exactly the same as what I was saying before about the uh, with the sticks. If it's got an edged weapon, don't stay with it. Same principle as what we're doing with the fire chain. Do not, for instance, if if he didn't have a knife, he was throwing it, just throwing a straight punch. Just that that would be more than that. That's just lovely. That that works a trick. But his hand's still, you know, it's kind of close to me. I don't I don't want it there if it's got a knife in it. That that's beautiful. If he's, if he's not got a knife, but if there's a knife in his hand, if he's got that knife, I don't want to be sliding up his arm. Because if I if I kill him, sure, if I put my hand in his face, I should be okay. But any good knife I will know, as soon as he's done his first lunge, if I've evaded, as soon, yeah, he's going to pull it straight back and across my arm. That's what any good knife... No, no good training in the dojo by where... Obviously, when you're first learning a technique, you train like that. But if I'm going to train you against knife, I'm not just going to go, okay, you bump it. And you know, allow <laughs> someone in the streets. Don't you do the same thing? I'm not, you know, I'm not just going to stay there. I'm going to slide as soon as you. If you haven't hit me, I'm going to take your wrist off and take your guts out, sort of thing. So that's why you must, when he pokes, <coughs> you must bump his body enough so that he goes over there. The basic principle is, I don't want to. I want to do the minimum movement possible to get the maximum effect on his body, which is where Fa Jin comes into play. Like what we're doing on the bag before, we're just doing that, but putting a lot of power out into it. So when I'm hitting his arm here, we'll, we'll just use this as a, well, there's lots of different ways of attacking with an arm. We'll just use a basic poke to the neck to get the principle across. So I'm just coming across with my both hands, just like that. But I'm not going like this. You can see now we're both kind of in the same position. So we're both going to be coming back at the same time. And he's still got a knife in his hand, so he's still got the upper hand. What we want is when he comes in, he's over there, but I've got my hand in the back of his head. So that's the golden principle to what we want. The golden principle, the three rules with, with knife attack is evade, bump, and attack. It's simple. So it's coming in any kind of, you're obviously going to get out of the way, you evade it, but I'm not just, just going to evade it and do this, because again, no matter how much I move my body, I'm still going to be fairly close to the knife. So the basic principle is, there comes the knife, evade, bump, and attack. But it's all going to happen in the blink of an eye. So he comes in with the knife, and this is what we want, and from there you can do whatever you want to him. So we'll just use that as a basic technique to get the principle. But well, we're bumping across like that, just simple, just two hands, just a yin hand like that and a yang hand like that. Be careful of the elbow. So the person doing the, the lunge, just hold a bit of tension in your arm just so you're not going to hyperflex your arm in case someone does hit you on the elbow. Um, so you're just bumping across like that. It's simply bump and strike. Very simple, but the difficulty of it, of course, is getting enough power here without your arms going as far as his arms are going. You've got to do exactly this left hand in particular is, just hold your arm there, is doing exactly the same as what we did on the bag earlier. That would be in a slightly different body position, of course, but it's that same body mechanic as what we did before. Right, left, right. It's that barging motion. So you're getting from that short distance, that sort of thing happening. So I'm getting, but I'm getting this as well. And this hand's slightly coming down the arm, like that. This one's pushing more through the arm. There is a circle to it. I'm not just going, I'm not going uh, like that. I'm not slipping up the arm, as I said before. The circle, if, if, again, if I did it really big so you could see the circle, it would be kind of like that kind of motion. Like there's a slight <coughs> backward circle and then coming forward, but it's so small it looks like the hand's just going forward. But just keep in mind, everything's always circular. Everything that we do in, in, the, in the Tai Chi form, for instance, when you're seeing the movements, there might be some postures within the form which seem like a forward movement followed by a backward movement, in which case would be a straight line. But what we're trying to get is every posture has a slight circle. The basic principle behind that is, okay, if my hand's going forward, I'm not going to go, 
because that's straight forward and straight back. It's, it's got this little hook on just on the end. Because if, again, if it's waving out from what the body's doing, you get that waving action always with every posture that we do. So we want here, basically, just get the, again, just basic principle, bump it, bump it out of the way, move your body to the side, V step, so you're stepping out with this leg, dragging the rear foot up. So evade, bump, and just slam your open palm. That's another, another reason why we use the whole hand, is you don't have to be accurate. If I just use my heel palm, I mean, generally there, you're going to hit something pretty good anyway, but if I use the whole hand, you're going to hit something for sure. And if you've got enough power in it, it doesn't matter that you're not using a tiny little weapon. But if you just basically aim the whole hand to the temple, then you're going to get a good shot. Either the temple or anywhere above the ear is a great shot. So coming in with the knife, and that's what we want. Now because of how far his body turned then, of course, I went straight to gallbladder 20, mm. rather than the head shot. You're going to obviously have to go for whatever's presented to you after you've done your defence. So that if his body happens to turn a bit further, so just simulate what you do there, about straight behind his head. From there, I've got his head. Oh, I'm sorry. That's <laughs> it. I mean, I mean you've got your, you, you can do whatever you, you know, your world's your oyster once you've got your first shot and you can do whatever you want. So long as you don't sort of go, <laughs> do something like that, he's going to come back at you. You keep it all, obviously, you know, like what we've been doing before. But that's the main principle when you get it, just the bump and the follow-up strike. So that strike we're doing there is exactly what we just did on the back. It's no, only we're doing it a bit higher. But I'm not, again, I'm not like this, I'm slightly to the side. So then come back in with something else afterwards. The other hand, of course, is still just there, you know, just ready for, for his arm. So now we go at that. Start again just very slowly with the knife, so you can get the principles right. 